Hello everyone and welcome back to Around the World in 80 Planes. For this flight I'm flying from Tallinn in Estonia to Warsaw in Poland in a MiG-21. This is a freeware MiG-21, but it was made for X-Plane 10. Uh, that said, it seems to work just fine. The cockpit details, well it's certainly the right color, it's got uh, Russian dials, it seems to be pretty decent given that it's freeware. Outside, uh, well, it's fine. <laughs> it's got multiple textures and in this case we've got a Polish texture. So that is a appropriate for our flight. The flight is 454 nautical miles which is important because looking at Wikipedia the range for this plane uh, with an external fuel tank is 428 nautical miles. I'm not entirely sure where they mean range or where they mean combat range. Uh, those are obviously two different things. The ferry range is usually something that's different. I'm hoping that that's the ferry range. Um, we will see. But I've got three drop tanks just in case. Probably I cannot, uh, you know, run the afterburner the whole way though. Uh, so we'll do what we can with the afterburner and hope for the best. Uh, but if I have to land at a uh, other airfield, hopefully I'll at least get to Poland. But uh, yeah, we will see. And... In my experience with this plane, I have to be very careful with it when it goes through the sound barrier. And I have to not do that too often because I've overstressed this one before. Okay, unfortunately Talon is still partly underwater as it was in the previous video. And that's because of a scenery glitch that is entirely inaccurate. Uh, it is not usually flooded this way. Apologies to Estonians. With that and... Uh, as has been our pattern, we are listening to the Apollo 12 audio. Currently, Albin and Pete Conrad are on the surface of the moon and doing their second EVA, which will include a trek up to the surveyor probe. They landed right next to it. Meanwhile, Dick Gordon is still in orbit around the moon in the command module. So, continuing with that audio. And let's get on with this flight. Hey, you sure beat on it. Yeah, definitely not supposed to be water here. We gotta take them apart. Remember? Apologies. Okay, well what we'll have to do is pick it up. Right over there. Where is it? It's right over here. Okay. The MiG-21 is nimble, but at least this version of it seems to be finicky. It's tough to keep it from rolling away from where I want it. Let's try to avoid the water side. Still technically going too fast at this altitude. Oh, 
Remember, running the afterburner at low altitude is not fuel efficient, and in this case we... I wouldn't say that we are being fuel efficient, but we'll, we'll try a little bit. Still wants to roll left, even though I've done some aileron trim. Okay, let me start this pan. 74. 74 it is. That's 11. 250. Okay. Okay, Houston, what else would you like here? Okay, Pete, uh, you're two hours and seven minutes into the EVA, and we show you leaving Halo uh, at around 215, and now that's for a four-hour EVA. We've extended you 30 minutes for a total uh, EVA of four hours. We'd like, uh, before you go on, to have a good EMU check. And, uh, sit that down looks and pretty stable and right now. Figure out a plan of attack on the surveyor. See how One winds are. Like to make sure is that you remain away from to the side. below the surveyor as you move up to it. That is, move up to it on one side or the other, either north or south. Okay, uh, we concurred with that. Uh, we were talking about it last night. We're going to approach it from the side. Roger. It's like they're dealing with a wild animal instead of a probe. Approaching it from the side, approaching it from one side, a plan of attack. Yep, it's uh, fidgety. Sample a couple of these this plane. Over here. Good idea. Service ceiling is 57,000 feet. Whoa, oh, by the way. Oh, wow, my ears just came back down. <laughs> I shouldn't have done that. It's okay. Here, take one quick picture so we can save some film. All right, here it goes where it came from. Two to six. Okay, I think we're gonna expedite things at this point. The afterburner is basically off or on.
Well, we'll be able to tell when we break the speed of sound pretty easily. We'll hit an immense amount of drag suddenly. Sure could. I thought I did not call that 13 D Houston. I think I did call it out loud enough. I think it was 13 D. Uh, then let me I'll check the next one in a few. For next time we stop, I'll tell you the next one for sure, and then you'll know what it is. All right, thank you, Al. So I, I do want to pass by Riga, so I need to actually turn a little bit further to the right here. And then also Vilnius, and then to Warsaw. inside here oh we're just at the speed of sound I think this is our fuel dial in liters okay we just passed the speed of sound that's why we suddenly nose down a bit or a lot and previously when I overstressed it was because I yanked it up too fast to compensate for the drag Gotta do that gently. Because there's so much drag, that means also there's a lot of dynamic pressure on the vehicle. We don't want to go below the speed of sound again, otherwise we're going to go through all that stress one more time. go up really much more efficient at higher altitudes we are still over Estonia I really need to take a close look at the fuel. I don't know which one is the fuel flow rate. Probably the ones above the fuel, or one of those two. They're both reading different numbers. I'm talking about those right above the fuel gauge. This one is a pressure of some sort. I certainly want to get eventually the DCS World MiG-21. I've got that on my wish list. That should be some fun. 
Don't want to get too close to Mach 1 again. Got all these speeds up in the upper left, but not the Mach number. The Mach number is a different display. Basically, a different line if I wanted to see it. This seems like the stock textures that we're over right now. We're crossing over into Latvia. I guess I don't have the photo scenery in this particular location. Now what we do is go directly east and then walk directly sort of, you know, curving right around it down to it. Roger, copy. You're going directly east and then you'll be curving around going up north towards the surveyor. Yeah, you get a... Um, you get kind of an optical illusion depending on where you're standing. Trade me one, trade me magazine. Okay, man, man. Careful when you undo it. I'll tell you what, you better put that one in. Oh, we want to burn. Okay, I want to put it back on here, Pete. We're presumably uh, using the external right, tanks try. right now, and I'm waiting for this dial to put it in here. You're right. start going down. Right. Then we'll have to come out of afterburner, I think. This is really the first flight of this entire series where fuel management has been an issue. The flights have been sort of made to be one hour apiece, and most planes don't have too much of a problem with that. But an interceptor, which this is, is an exception to that. Interceptors are not really packing fuel, they, and they maximize speed, and that means also a big engine. For the airframe. Trigger pull. Let it go. Now try again. Try again. Had that babe. No, no stray. Okay, let me put it on. And that's a good plane, too. Okay. I wonder what the range on an F 104 is with its tiny wings. Okay, we're starting to. We've been using internal fuel. I'll wait till it gets to 2,000 liters and then uh, we'll come out uh, after the. Maybe we can get to Riga by then. You can see that river hey, mouth just, right uh, there, that's where Riga is. Could you uh, stop them to have a little break there before you proceed on down the slope? 
And I want to say it's the capital and largest city of Latvia. Yeah, it is. It's got a third of Latvia's population, even. about ready to come out uh, after burner right over Riga Okay, so directly over Riga now. We are pretty close to our service ceiling. And so we've got a lot of energy. Uh, we can save some of that fuel. And I now want to turn towards Vilnius. Not the straightest course to Warsaw if we go to Vilnius, but I think we can afford the diversion, hopefully. These are just the stock textures below us. I'll have to get photo scenery for these areas. Not sinking in very far at all. This is fairly firm stuff. And uh, I'm down in the crater about the same distance down a surveyor is. I'm just going around it radially. Would you say so, Al? Yeah, I'd say that uh, uh, I think Houston is just, just concerned about us getting down in this crater. We've been thinking about okay. it too, Houston. Now, don't but, worry uh, about it, Houston, because it's, it's really, it's no strain. I'm uh, 200 feet away from it. I'm at the same level. The ground is firm, and I could go right back up the way I came out with no strain at all. That's right. Roger, sounds good. It was going to be last night when we were talking about it. Yeah, it is. I, I don't think there'll be any sweat. Now, I'll tell you what to do. Get right over here, and we'll park all our gear, take ourselves a little rest, go over your photo plan, and then we'll have okay, it. Let's go right over here. I'll tell you what, why don't you get a photograph of it right now? That's a good place. Okay, we'll do it. Stop and do it right here. Try to see which way it landed. Okay, Pete, uh, and Al, when you're looking at it there, would you also uh, try to determine whether there's any effect from the dust during the descent? That is, could you determine whether there's uh, more dust on either the west or the east side of uh, any of the bays? Trying to keep it above Mach 1 the for the moment. Of the uh, camera. Okay, we sure will. I actually flew around it. However, I uh, probably passed closer to it than I am parked to it right now. No, that's not really true. Uh, I'll tell you the way that dust was going, it probably went right over top of it. 
You know, that's right. Any dust you hit on the edge would never go down to this crater. Yeah, what has to be volume, man? I don't know how to. Sounds good to me. Hey, you just we read you both loud and clear. Okay, no problem. I'm going to move you up here just a little, Pete, without any tools, which makes it pretty easy. But look, I'll tell you what, let's leave the whole... I'll tell you what, let's take the tool carrier with us. I think yeah. we go right up the other rim and around to... Uh, sure. Stand right on that blocky baby there. And, uh, hey, we can hit that bedrock right over there. That's huh? that neat crater. Yeah. Well, I'd rock you. Just give it to the back of the lamp. Turned up. I'll you know, I could have landed the lamp at the bottom of that crater. That scared me to death, but... <laughs> Okay, we're pretty close to... Yep, we're at Mach 1 exactly, and there's the lift that comes with breaking below the sound barrier. And again, we have to be very, very gentle about getting it to pitch down here. Shearer don't want to stall, of course. on the side and the scoop itself was a light blue. Well it's kind of a well we'll get down there and get post inspection. What was the general color of all the structure? For example all the struts and the like. That's all white. The equipment bays and the primary structure is all painted with a white paint. Oh, I don't want to go yeah, past the good. sound barrier again. Shoot, 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 shoot. You know, it's funny. On the slopes here, it's just a little bit softer, but there's no tendency to slip down or anything like that. I know. I don't think it's any deeper. A little softer, maybe. Maybe a little bit. Oh, deeper. we're past the speed of sound on it. We dove a little bit too okay, much. Okay, there's a raft down here where we can see it better. Okay, let's just make sure we don't get any dirt down here on it. Okay, we'll walk real slow. Hey, you can see, look at there where it does go scoops. We are now over Lithuania. It was probably from them. Okay, we got the lift again. He says. I tell you what, hey Al, did you get a picture right across there? Yes, I did, Pete. Why don't, why don't you go ahead and put this together? Okay. Or your tongues while you're there, just a second. I'll get back to you. Good place to rest. Uh, 
Seems to be updating some scenery. I don't know why we seem to have a line following us right there. Hmm. Surveyor landed April 19th, 1967. Hold that a minute. What are you trying to get? No one jumps up there. Okay, there. Yeah, I can hold it. What do you want me to hold? Hold that camera a second. Why don't we just throw that camera away? Well, I was, I was thinking that earlier and decided that this one broke. We might have to put that one on. There you go. Reliability. I'm not thinking. Uh, it's trying to break the sound barrier again by diving. It just uh, hits the transonic drag and then wants to dive, and then as it dives, it goes faster. Let's see the fuel. One one thousand five hundred liters looks like. Oh boy. We're about halfway to Vilnius. Okay, From yeah, Riga, I mean. Yep, it's trying to accelerate by drag again. We do have photo scenery at Warsaw. Mercifully. Oh, that handle and throw it away. Okay, that's a good answer. Jump the out of there, we don't need. So I think they're taking Seven. photos of Surveyor now. Fifteen. Boy, that's turned just kind of a light tan, hasn't it? Bigger has. Yep. And some of the things are even a dark brown. Now you're closer. Fifteen. Don't go any closer. Yeah, maybe I better back up. Yeah. Add a boy. How's that? Yep. Hey, Pete, uh, do you think there's a chance you're at the wrong Surveyor? <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> Making cracking jokes, are we? No, sir. Boy, it sure dug in the ground, didn't it? I think five okay, surveyors okay, landed Mark, successfully on the moon, two failed. Okay, what's next? But, uh, Photo yeah. TV they did not all land at the same place. 15, three pictures. <laughs> okay, let me move down. Hey, this tough checklist sure helps do the job. Sure does. Cadet Gibson checklist. Okay, yeah. Hey, look at that bird still on the footpad. It's going to make compliments to the Capcom. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hey, nice whoa. Brown I was just checking the map. Yeah. And the suddenly it goes out of whack. You really can't yeah. let this plane not so brown, but it's leave it to its own yeah. devices the for very long. Not a bit of it. It's fractured. Yep. Okay. Shovel is gray. Take the surveyor scene here. I don't want to kick any of this dirt up because I'd like to get a picture of compacting of the dirt there. Yeah. But a good tough shot. That's photo TV sector, F8 15 and 3. Now I have photo scoop imprints. F8 5 2 and stereo. Okay, wait, I'm not, I'm not finished yet. Oh, we did actually break the speed of sound right there. Okay. Oh, that color chart is sure changed colors these days. Okay, let me get a quick shot here. I'm about to keep feeding off shit. Okay, okay so the city in front of us is Vilnius. Photo scoop imprint. F8, 5 feet, 2 in stereo. Okay. The scoop imprints look different than I imagined. Okay, let me try. Get a little closer. Have to really bend over it. And it too is the capital and largest city of Lithuania. But where are you shooting now? Shooting right there with the oh, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm, yeah. Roughly the same size as Riga too. But the next one is photo of the footpads two prints F eight five two in stereo. Hey, just a second, I'll get it. I'm gonna but I know what I'm gonna do. Okay. But okay, yeah, I'll get the footpads now. And then also get the dirt that's on them. Okay, on to Warsaw. We actually need to make a right turn okay, of about 45 degrees. Oh, now I see uh, a pair of cooling towers down there puffing up smoke. Okay, how's our fuel? About 1,200 liters now. Other than that, it looks pretty much the same. The thing that's most amazing to me is how it's turned so brown. That may or may not be okay. We'll see. <laughs> it's pretty close. It's pretty close. Okay, I don't want to pitch down. You can see how close we are to Mach 1. Because it's, uh, I would give it a go, but, uh, 
They're better than no pictures at all. That's right. That's exactly right. Okay, got it there, Pete. Ready for the next one. Okay, photo small box F85. Okay, now it's pretty much in the shadow. I'm going to open it up a little bit. That's my shadow. No, 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 it's in the shadow yeah, of the, right. the uh, landing radar or the... I think you got a photo of that scoop there the way it dug in. I did. There's no way that thing could fly down the hill on us the way it's dug in. Uh -huh. Okay, now let me get that foot pad. That's a beautiful shot there. We're going to do foot pad three, I guess it is. Or is that one? Foot uh -huh. pad three. Okay, and that's going to be an F8, probably. It's pretty low. Let me try five, six. Good that aft uh, honeycomb uh, shock absorber. Struck the dirt. Looks like it took some of the shock. Other than that, the front one didn't appear to do that. There we go there. Sure isn't going to slide down the hill, though, that's for sure. Okay, Pete, what's next? Back up 15 feet and take it. Photo, baby. Okay, let me get over 11, here. 15, 1. It's going to be a tough shot because it's in the sun, but I'll get it to go. Get over here, I might help it. Rush, you gotta clip the corner of Belarus a little bit here. We're not too far away from Minsk right now. Minsk. Oh, we're past probably oh, still. Let's see. I know what I'm trying to shoot the top of it. I guess. Give a few extras. Okay, go ahead. Okay, photo solar array. Yeah. I really need to stop going past the speed of sound. Just go down a little and then it breaks the sound barrier. Speed of sound again. Can you tell? Yep. Okay. Now I I uh, photograph the uh, trenches, right? Yeah. Okay. Hey, this is this is so much easier working around than in one G in our practice. It's unbelievable. Pete, can you move your shadow in this situation? Roger, Pete. Good way to have it. What is it? Five meters. Mechanical components down inside it. Yeah. 
So the little corner of Belarus we're uh, clipping as a city called Grodna or Grodno, depending on, I guess, who's saying it. And probably with an accent that sounds like neither of what I just said. And I'll tell you when we're passing over that city. So we are now over Belarus. Back up just a little bit. Try for 15 feet. And we just broke below the sound barrier again. Okay. Uh, you can see go. why reacting to this I might accidentally overstress the vehicle when it pitches up like this. So, being very carefully. Oh, that camera is just not right on the money. It's out of focus. Okay. Okay, Houston. I think that city to our left on the river is Rodno or Grodno. Okay, Al, we're ready to start getting a TV camera. Okay. Now, hey, do you want to do something for me first? Yes, sir. Okay. Check our fuel situation. This seems okay. Still close, but okay. Apologies for not getting better scenery for this area, the photo scenery is lacking. As we enter Poland now, aimed at uh, Bialystok. Smile. We are ready. Okay. Now, this cable here, it's well, not a Y cable at all, is it? Uh -uh. It is a Y cable, but it's in a different manner. Not gonna... Okay. Oh, uh, yeah. Now, they didn't tell us either. Look at that. Two extra ones. Yeah. I'll tell you what, you're just going to have to get that, that well, piece and I'm going to have to cut it on the other side. Just wait a second, let me get in there. Okay. Get, uh, drop that in the can. That's the only piece they're going to get that way. Okay. 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 Watch it. Now i got to cut the cable back here, though. Okay. Why don't you, why don't you give that a cut? I do, Pete. All right. Give a couple pieces. There, there you go. go. 
Okay, now the city in front of us is Bialystok. Okay, after this, the next big city up is Warsaw. It has sort of weathered a little bit, three and a half, 31 months. Check fuel. Fuel's fine. Assuming that gauge isn't lying or anything. Nondescript yeah, sky today. Yeah. Like Not much by way of clouds. Sounds like they're dealing okay. with a series of tubes. Roger, we got me. How about right here, Pete? Roger, we got me. Wait a minute. It's a shiny tube. That'd be a good one if we could cut it. Where? Right there? Oh, that's even thicker. Yeah, I guess it looks as if I get the camera. Get the tube. Why don't you bang them with one yeah, that glass? The tool. No kidding. Hey, Pete? Huh? Why don't you bang that glass one? Won't even break. <laughs> it's pretty good glass, Houston. Can't even break it with our... There you go. Half a piece off and I'll collect it for you. Got a crunch is done in it. That's not glass. No, no. Man, forget it. Oh, what it is. But sure not what we tried out in Houston. Made oh. it the case. That's metal with glass. You, you better take a picture of it, though. It's very interesting. interesting. Excuse me. I need to go before you are again. Amazing. A bit tough shot, too. A bit over on this side of it. Okay. Okay, that'll be a good shot. Oh well. Okay. Since we're past the speed of sound anyway, we might as well descend quickly. Thanks to Joe Roberts' bags, we're gonna do the job, I think. 
I think I see the edge of the Warsaw photo scenery up ahead there. So this is our 30th flight. Next one will be to Budapest. Or Budapest. I'm not entirely clear about that. Shiny tubes. That's a good one. They appreciate the tubes. Like the rocks. Shiny good tubes. Job. Well rounded rocks. Good one, dude. Okay, two more tubes on that TV camera and that baby's eyes. Getting into the red zone on the fuel. Let's just decelerate. It's in the bag. It's in the bag. <laughs> couldn't, uh, couldn't help not saying that again. I mean, couldn't help saying that again. Whatever. Okay, let me get around the other side. It's so hard to zip. This is one of the hard parts. Okay? Want me to bend over a little bit? Yeah, sure would. Have that lean back. That, that'll do it. Just like that. Don't play me over. I'm right. I won't. I won't. I won't. Do that. Stay right there. You can see the highway there. We've actually been following it for a while, but it wasn't very distinct on the stock landscape. Or is it a real line? I think it might be a real line, actually. Whoa, I didn't want to descend that quickly. Okay, now let me put the covers down on it. Before you get that thing buried too deep, how about let me cut this scoop off? Well, okay, the scoop goes right in here. Oh, you got a place for it. Sure. Didn't think you were going to leave without a scoop, did you? No. Okay. Grab the scoop. Yeah, that's the problem. That's what they said, but hey, let me hold it. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Let me let me help. Yeah, you got it. Broke. That's good. Oh, smooth and silk. Okay, so we want to land at EPWA, which is right there, Chopin Airport. After the composer. As well, uh, minimize how so much fuel we're using right now. Well. So we suggest you go on with a nominal traverse. We may uh, want you to cut down to perhaps just one sample at uh, Blocky Crater. Okay, that's what I wanted to do. Is go hey. to Blocky Crater if you agree. Hey, look, look at that. We thought for the sake of fuel, we'll, we'll save the sightseeing for the, the next flight. We're losing audio here. I guess that's a tape problem since it's everybody. Sometimes the tape is just not so good. Okay. 
Let's do it. Here's this rock right here. Let me uh, give the uh, surveyor tool a heave. Okay. We don't need it for anything, do we? Uh, we Houston, we don't need the survey tool anymore, do we? If you've got the uh, TV back at the uh, lamp already cut off, then uh, there's no more need for it. Okay, Dad, that lamp, that TV's Okay, Al, have I got my scoop on? Do you? I've yeah. got your full measure of rock right here. Okay, let me go get the sample bag. Hey, that's a good one. I don't think the TV could see that. Maybe it was too close. How about this one? I'm tempted at this point to look up how to deploy the drogue chute, okay. assuming it has one. All right. But yeah. I think I can manage landing it Try without to, that, uh, hopefully, uh, maybe. That, uh, well, we've got some texture problems over there. Or at least I think we do. Pete Nell, Houston, uh, before you leave the area of the surveyor, would you take a look back at the surveyor and see whether the direction of the sunlight has any effect on the colors which you see? Ah, good question. Direction of the wait, wait, let me get this in the bag too. Sorry, didn't know you had it, Pete. Okay. Uh, I uh, know it's, it's light brown wherever you look at it. Uh, up sun, down sun, or cross sun. But strangely enough, that light brown rubs off. That's the funny yeah. part. Because the dirt here is not brown. Look, is that the rock right there? You know, these rocks, uh, as they showed in the survey pictures, all have this soil build up around them. Yeah, we got some oh, texture right. problem over to the right there. It's definitely not how it should look. Right there. Remember where but that's not where Warsaw is. is. Warsaw. Or, well, I mean, Warsaw is sort of to our forward right. Well, let's take a look. Uh, how's the fuel? Oh yeah, I'll be fine. about brushing up against the uh, battery case. Would you uh, make sure that anything which you picked up against that battery case, you clean off your EMU? Yeah, I was thinking about that. Is that any signs of KOH anywhere? Uh, we've looked the battery okay. case was tight. Nice and tight and brown. Right here's the one that's square with me. Roger. Guess that uh, battery casing might have leaked whatever battery stuff that they have, KOH, potassium hydroxide. Yeah, this patch over here to our right just seemed to have some bad cloudy timing right there. Hey, do you have a sample bag number on that last one? We got those rocks are too big for sample bags. There are big rocks. Well, at least uh, six inches diameter. And uh, I think these are something like the one you wanted. It's kind of hard to tell with, without having a photograph on hand or something. Or uh, it was just there. foggy or something. I don't know what's going on with that area right there. It's which rocks are which. Roger. Pretty easy to move along on this slope. It's just a little bit deeper, a little bit softer. I'm going to take a break here, Pete, for a few seconds. All right, I'm with you. Can't get up your pace when you're running on the side of a slope. Uh-uh. You're, you don't have a chance to go from side to side like on level ground. Look at that huge boulder out there. At, uh, oh, I wish we could go over there. The city is there, to our right. Boulder. There. Straight ahead. You there? That one? Over the top of the hill. The 
where you're looking. Right on the other side of it, about 200 yards that way. See that big boulder sitting up there? The biggest one we've seen since we've been here. We have air brakes. Yeah. Let's see which one you're referring to. That one right there. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, he's down in here bigger than that. I don't really Look see him. Right here. Look at that right there on your left. Look. You turn around and look. Gigantic right there. That's a big one. Left. Come further left. That's a pretty good size. I got it. Let's head up. Yeah. Let's get up out of the crater where we get up on the level ground. Okay. Pete? Huh? Uh, this, uh, there was kind of hung up on the, uh, the, uh, Hey, let's see. Get the the flaps. Lots of different neighborhoods around here. It'd be cool enough back to mid cooling. I'm definitely getting the gear out prematurely, but I want to figure out how much throttle I need to get a certain speed. Obviously very low. <laughs> that goes without saying. With a lot of bedrock, big chunky rocks blown up out of it. The inner shell uh, of the double craters on the side of the surveyor crater. And then my recommendation is we've got so much gear and so many rocks that we head to the left and start packing it all up. Roger, we concur. That's a good idea. Al, could you give us uh, your percent? I sure could. Looks like about 36 percent. Copy, 36 on both. And uh, how you doing on that film? All right, time to get back into the cockpit. Uh, let me ask you. Let me ask question. Boy, I, my camera's completely dust covered. Yeah, I'm Good a little bit low, even my my standards. Good shape. Now, why don't you stand right here and get a partial of while you're resting on this crater either side? Oh, okay. Let's go for that. I guess that's the only runway in this direction, actually. Wiki says that landing speed for this is 130 knots. Wants to decelerate, it sure decelerates quickly. Really banged it out. These blocks are a lot more sharp corners. 
Oh, I might have wanted that drogue shoot. These brakes are not doing much. I think we'll make it. Um, let's take this taxiway if we can. I don't know how much more runway there is. Okay, this is gonna be sample bag number, uh... Still trying to slow down. <laughs> this is not a normal sort of thing, but alright. I guess they didn't want to go with really heavy brakes on this thing. Okay. So we have arrived at Chopin Airport in Warsaw. And we'll hopefully swing by the city center in the next episode. I'm just cutting through this whole place. And, and I'm going to pause the audio right there. And with that, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this flight. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.